So today we're going to go ahead and go over how to flash the older generation of Cisco access points. The one I'm going to be doing is the 3702i. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I want to go ahead and know how to flash some of the older Cisco access points? Well, these 3702i Wave 1 AC access points can be had for like 20 or 30 dollars a piece on eBay. You can throw a few of them up in your house with a wireless LAN controller and and you'll pretty much blow the doors off of most of the consumer and equipment out there. This is AC, so you'll probably be topping out in real world performance of around 60 megabytes a second per stream or per client. And you'll get enterprise class stability. Keep in mind these things are used in hospitals, schools, and other industry environments where stability is a must. So with that said, let's go ahead and go over some of the equipment we'll need. We're going to need a USB to RJ45 Cisco console cable or just general RJ45 console cable which can be had on eBay for I think about $8. Next thing you're going to need is you're going to be able to need to power your access point. So in order to do that you're going to want to make sure you have either a PoE power injector, an AC adapter, or a PoE switch which will connect to your Ethernet port on the back of the Cisco access point as long as the Cisco access point you've purchased supports PoE functionality. Another thing you're going to need is just a standard RJ45 to RJ45 cable. You're going to be needing this for the flash procedure and if you are using the PoE method you're going to need one more of these cables. For me, I will personally be using a switch that has PoE capability so I'll just be getting power straight from the switch into the access point. Now let's go ahead and get started on a basic breakdown of the flash procedure. So we're going to be flashing this access point to an autonomous image from a lightweight image. Now the reason we're doing that is because a lot of people are maybe just going to buy two of these or, or maybe just one and they just want to go ahead and use it as a regular access point for Cisco stability but they're not deploying like a large network that's going to require a heavy amount of constant load so they just want to set up the access point itself and they're not going to need a wireless LAN controller for controlling multiple Cisco access points in an enterprise class environment. So in order to use just one or two of these or you know we're going to do the autonomous method, which means we're going to flash it from the lightweight to the autonomous image, which will give you basic GUI functionality in most cases. Uh, now, on some of the newer iOS images for these older access points, you have to enable HTTP functionality for security reasons, and it just doesn't come on by default anymore, and you have to do a few other configuration steps to get the access point moving. And then you'll be able to log into the web-based GUI and do the configuration from there. And the procedure's not that hard. If you haven't done a lot of CLI work, it's just a few basic commands and you're good to go. Uh, now we are going to be using the X modem method to send the image over to here, which is the best method to use if you run into a problem where one of these is bricked or the flash is corrupted. The only problem with it is it does take a while to transfer. You can expect all the way up to an hour just for the image to send over here because you're going to be limited from by the baud rate that you have set because you're going to be sending it over serial, which is not that fast. So you should go ahead and plug your console cable into your computer now. After you do that, Go over to your access point and plug in the RJ45 end of your, of your console cable into the access point. I'm going to go ahead and prep the RJ45 cable. This is what we're going to be using to get both power and data to the access point. So I'm not going to be plugging into the access point yet. I'm going to go ahead and plug it straight over into my PoE switch. And there's Cheeto. He helps me with a lot of my videos. He's just an old son Connor. He likes to sit there. 
the exit were reported pretty much. Okay. So let's go over here. Get you back there like that. Okay, so you're plugged in and good to go. And right, turn right back around here. And just lay the RJ45 cable right there. Because we're not going to be using it right now. And for the next process we're going to be doing. Because we don't want to turn on just yet. We want to go ahead and prep our software environment now. Okay, so I'm on my Windows machine. What we're going to want to go ahead and do is we're going to want to go ahead and prep our Windows environment for the Cisco access point flash. So the best way to probably actually do this would be to use Linux. And the reason I say that is Linux just in general is a more stable operating environment to be doing command line work, especially when it comes to working with firmware images and doing proprietary procedures like this. But for this method, we're going to do the Windows method just because it's easier. And we're going to do a stable terminal called TerraTerm. So let's go ahead and get started. So in order to do that, we're just going to go ahead and type in TerraTerm. And you can either go to their Git link and build it via the source. I just like to download it from their product homepage. It just saves me the time from building. So you go here and click download. And then you'll see TerraTerm 4.106. Just go ahead and click the XE to download. Install it. And after it's installed, you'll have a pretty icon on your desktop like mine right there. And that's what we're going to be using. So go ahead and launch TerraTerm. Go ahead and select zero right here. And the nice part about this is it already has your COM port right here. So unlike PuTTY, where you actually have to go in and type the COM, it actually already has it here, which saves some time and it's pretty nice. Although I, I wish whenever you'd open this up, it'd remember your last choice. It doesn't, unfortunately. Okay, so now that we did that, we're going to go ahead and insert our POE RJ45 Ethernet cable and while I'm inserting this cable I'm going to be holding the mode button down and you're going to want to be holding this for quite a while I believe it's like around 30 to 60 seconds for it to go past the factory default with the mode button and then just go straight and run on Is waiting for button to be released. I'd go ahead and hold it for like another 30 seconds. If you don't hold it long enough, it'll just do a factory default. And if you have the lightweight image, you'll keep trying to communicate with the wireless LAN controller. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and release the button now. Okay, so it dropped me right into Rama mode. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do here is type in format, flash, colon, enter, are you sure? Yes, enter. The reason we're doing this is because we just want a fresh start. We want to delete any configurations off here and any iOS software that's on here. We just want a fresh start. Okay, maximize it here for all to see better. Oh, 
Okay, so it has confirmed formatted. Next thing we're going to want to go ahead and do here is type in set capital B A U D for the baud rate, and then type in 115200, enter. Now, right after you do this, you should notice uh, a lot of weird characters, or you won't notice any characters at all. And you'll notice when you push enter, it seems like it's not responding. That's because the baud rate's changed, and that's the communication speed between the access point and your terminal here. So what you want to go ahead and do here is click on setup, and then go down to serial port, and then go ahead and change this 9600 to 115200. Click on new setting here, and then just go ahead and press enter again. As you see, it's starting to respond again. It's because we got the terminal now at the correct speed. They weren't in sync. So now that they're in sync, it's working. Now what we need to go ahead and do is go ahead and reboot the access point. And the reason we're doing this is a lot of times, even though you set the baud rate and the terminal is functioning correctly at that baud rate speed, the Xmodo command won't function correctly at that baud rate speed. So to ensure that doesn't happen, what you're going to go ahead and do is just reset the access point now by unplugging the Ethernet cable and plugging it back in. And you're also not going to have to worry about hitting the mode button or anything this time because you formatted the flash, so it's just going to drop right into the bootloader mode, which is ramen mode. Oh, quick thing. So before we go ahead and get started with the exponent flash procedure, a lot of y'all are probably wondering, Hey, uh, where do I get the iOS files and how do I get them? Cisco is very tight on their iOS files and they usually want you to have a partnership with Cisco uh, or to be in school or there's a few other ways you can get partnership with them to get access to their iOS files. I will let you in on a hint though. Uh, there are some developers and some other people from the forms and the Cisco community and just Cisco enthusiasts in general that do share the iOS files with each other. Usually they're on forms, IRC channels, uh, but there's a good one. Uh, it has something to do with iOS files and Cisco and Telegram. I'll let y'all search for it. If you can find it, you can find some iOS files on there to do your flashing. A lot of the developers share and post them back and forth through torrents, and it's just a Cisco group. I wouldn't spread it around too much because it probably won't be there, and I don't encourage any type of copyright infringement but for y'all that are doing your own labs or you're in schools or you're deploying a network for a client I realize you have to have access to those files and if you don't have a Cisco account and you're in financial strain and you just need and you're in possession of the hardware then if you do some searching you can find something otherwise I can't share any links or anything I'm sorry I wish I could maybe I'll visit me on my discord or send me a message I might be able to help y'all find an iOS file or something and now for the X modem flash procedure. So now what we're going to want to do here is we're going to go ahead and get the file name into the clipboard for the X modem command. So let me go ahead and go to my iOS firmware images. So I can get that name copied over into the clipboard. W7 being the autonomous images. Rename, copy, go back to TerraTerm. Now I'm going to go ahead and type in copy x modem colon flash colon shift insert or right click and hit enter. Now it's going to go ahead and say begin the x modem or 1k transfer now. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to File, Transfer, X Modem, Send. I'm going to go ahead and choose that file that I copied the name of into the clipboard. And as you can see, it's transferring now. So I'm not going to go ahead and make y'all wait for all that. Uh, we're just going to come back after it finishes and we'll go from there. Okay, so as y'all can see, the X modem copy command is completed successfully. Now we're going to go ahead and extract that tar image. 
So we're going to go ahead and type in tar dash extract flash colon slash. Go over here and highlight that file name. Right click space flash colon. So it's kind of just like the Linux CP command. You're typing tar dash extract then it, the then you're specifying the source and then you're specifying the destination. What is a little bit different here is the colon. That kind of sets some people off, especially when you're new to Cisco. Now we're just going to go ahead and hit enter here. So now it's extracting that file into the root of the flash. And now depending on your Raman mode and your access point, there's a chance you might have to set that binary file with set boot for it to boot, but usually that's not the case. And you just go ahead and restart when this process is finished, and it will boot right into the new Cisco IOS. Okay, so the extraction process is finished here. We can go ahead and restart the access point, and we are good to go. Should boot right up into the Cisco IOS. So let's just go ahead and unplug that RJ45. We happen to be powering it via PoE like I am. I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in. Oh, where is it at? It says, you can see it says, unable to locate IOS image with name, dot, dot, dot. That's because the set boot variable isn't set. But, as you can see, it found it anyway, and it started posting it, because it had a default search uh, procedure, so it went ahead and said, hey, let's go ahead and see if there's any other files on here we can boot from, and it boot right into it. So you don't have to set that boot variable, but in some cases you might. I usually never worry about it, to be honest with y'all. So as you can see, we have an AP prompt. Now I go ahead and type enable. And just type in Cisco with capital C, enter, and we're in. One thing too, y'all, uh, on some of the newer Cisco IOS releases, for the access points that are AC Wave 1 and under, at least from my notice, maybe on Wave 2 as well, uh, you have to manually enable the HTTP server now and set like a password and sometimes even an IP so you can go ahead and get into that web-based UI configuration page. So if you do the flash procedure and you're like, hey, why isn't my access point showing up on the DHCP server like it usually does? Or why can't I access the web-based UI? That's why. There's nothing wrong with your access point. You didn't do anything wrong with the flash procedure. It's just like that in the newer iOS files from what I've seen. Might not be like that with all of them, but for a lot of the newer ones, especially with these AC wave one and under access points it's like that so you didn't do anything wrong you got just you just got to do some extra manual config now so uh, if that helped y'all uh, go ahead and like and subscribe maybe support the channel if y'all want uh, if you have a tutorial request go ahead and send it over if you do support the channel uh, people with that have supported the channel and have a tutorial request will have priority so anyway if you like my material and everything like and subscribe